All right, all right, all right. Guru here. Um, so a little update to today on the south fork of the Coquille. As you can see, the water behind us looks pretty juicy. Um, but real spotty today. Uh, so we seen, let's see, one nice buck, probably about 10 pounds. Um, there was another boat that showed us a picture of a big native buck, probably about 14, 15 pounds. Uh, then there was a couple guys in pontoon boats. They had, they had one smaller hen native. Um, the first buck we seen was actually a hatchery. They knocked it out. Um, but then, uh, we were almost to the takeout, maybe like a half mile away. And, um, my beautiful wife, she hooked into it, just an absolute chrome and, um, just mint. And, uh, it went airborne. <laughs> she lost it, <laughs> but that's okay. We had a good opportunity and, uh, she got it, uh, Bobber dog in a bead. And, uh, it was pretty cool. I mean, it, at first she didn't think she had a fish and then it, then we realized she had a fish and then she kind of slack lined it a little bit, and, but it was still on and it just, we probably never really got a good hook set in it, but, um, uh, it was pretty cool. Nonetheless, we got a huge leap out of it and it was all over within about a minute, but, um, beautiful day. Now, um, we're actually at the Hayes ramp, which is the uppermost ramp on the South Fork. Now, if you're going to fish here, the Hayes ramp is a real son of a bitch. It's extremely steep, um, but not, you know, not that it's doable. There's, there's no boat slide here. Um, so you are just basically sliding it down dirt down into the river. Um, then we took out at what's called seven miles. There's a big parking lot as you're coming up and, um, it's pretty easy ramp to get out of. Uh, there is one bad spot when you're going down, um, where it's real rutted up. They need to fix that. But, um, uh, if you got a good solid four wheel drive, good tires, you'd be okay. But you need a full size four wheel drive truck. Um, cause you know, you need some height, uh, to get through the ruts a little bit. And there's some mud in the bottom and, uh, but not too bad. And then we put in at, I think it's called myrtle point it's like the one in the middle um uh really easy there's a gravel bar you can pull down into and we were there last year and that's the one where we uh we caught three or four fish right there at that boat ramp we didn't have a boat obviously and um that trip and and so but it, it you know all the boat ramps uh even this one you know has some pretty decent holes um you know, there's lots of really good bank access on the South Fork, even down low here in the valley. Um, it definitely, we are under low conditions. There's just not a lot of, uh, you know, there hasn't been a lot of rain here for the past six or seven days. But there's, you know, fish being caught. Not a lot of fish, but there's fish being caught. Um, and a few hatchery fish at that. My guess is the next good shot of rain, which is going to bring it up, is probably going to pull in a lot of fish. Now, going through Tidewater, because we're staying in Bandon, um, going through that, I noticed that it was pretty muddy. So one of the forks of the Coquille, if not the middle and north fork, or might be muddying it up. I have a feeling when we ran across the north fork, which runs between Coquille and Myrtle Point, it was kind of chocolate, so that could have been it. Because the tide affects that water system all the way up to, um, to Myrtle Point. Um, and so, you know, it has several forks that all come into it. And it could have been one of those. The North Fork for sure was. But, you know, I didn't see get a real good look at the Middle Fork this morning. It was still kind of dark. Um, when we crossed over it, uh, but you know, definitely I would, uh, I would recommend coming here. If you, if you want to come South, come here for sure. Um, there's lots of hatchery fish when they're here and that's been kind of the story this year. 
but people are getting fish and all the fish I've seen are big and chrome. And I mean, the one my wife hooked into, it was a hen that was probably at least, I would say 11 to 12 pounds. I mean, a big old fat egg wagon and, uh, and just leaped and spit the hook. And, uh, that was on one of my beads, uh, uh, Sears, which seems to be, I noticed a lot of fishermen today were all using Sears beads and or worms here. Um, didn't see a whole lot of bait. Uh, the older couple that knocked that one fish out we seen, I didn't see what they were using, but they were fishing a big tail out that you can actually walk down to um, from the road. There's several pullouts on the road. Now, there's a lot of them that aren't, don't have no trespassing signs but quite a few that do so definitely you know uh, you're going to want to pay attention to where you can and can't go now the upper part of the south fork above powers there's all kinds of public ground up there that you can go fish um we're probably going to go check that out a little bit tomorrow it's supposed to start raining tonight and uh if we don't do too much drinking at foley's in bandon our favorite Irish pub. So if you come to Band and definitely go to Foley's for sure. So it's a, uh, it's a cool place, man. Um, get some bangers and mash and fresh pine of Guinness and maybe a little, little sip of Tullamore Dew. So great place. Uh, definitely recommend Band for sure. We're staying at the Band Inn. Want to recommend them. Um, uh, for sure. They are, it's a great place to stay. Um, you know, there's cheaper places to stay, but they have such nice rooms and the view of downtown and the bay is just absolutely awesome. Um, at the band and in, uh, I want to thank Tanya for sure. She was the, the nice lady that, uh, did our shuttle today and I need to put links up for there. And, um, um, Joel, Oh, I forget Joel's name, last name. He's a guy down here who I emailed, and he was nice enough to give me Tanya's name um, for a shuttle, and then kind of just reached out and said, hey, you know, if there's anything you need, give me a call. Um, really, just everybody down here is so nice. And I'll, I'll put a link to Joel. I think it was Joel Blanton. I, I don't want to mess up his name because he... He seems like a really nice guy, and I want to give him a plug for sure for sharing the shuttle information. Having uh, a shuttle way up here really, you know, gives you peace of mind. Um, in fact, as soon as we dropped in, about 10, we were floating down the river, and I seen my truck and, and trailer going by. So, you know, to, to know your, your rig's already down there, it gives you a lot of peace of mind. And everybody's just been so kind down here. And, and um, you know, I wish the fishing today was a little better. But that's okay. I was with my beautiful wife. We had a great time. And and uh, we did hook into one fish. Uh, we're going to fish a little bit tomorrow. So I'll probably do a, uh, an update to that um, for sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, any good rain here in the next probably um, two weeks. Something to just, if you can see behind me here. You know, to just bring the water up. I can see the bottom right here. Um, you know, to just bring it up a little bit. To, I thought the rain we had last night was going to bring in some fish. And it may have down lower. There's quite a few spots down in the valley where you can pull off and go fish. But come down here, explore. It's only going to take you a couple trips. You know, hopefully this information helps everybody out. And, and um, you know... It, you get up the courage to come here. Anybody can come here. You, you know, I would definitely recommend if you do and you have the means, hire a guide here. You know, it took me three or four trips to get this place down. And this was, you know, the first time I drifted in my brand new boat down here. So, um, you know, in fact, let me tell you how nice everybody was. Uh, even the shuttle lady, Tanya, she told us about a tree that was across the river. And then there was another guide who had a couple clients that said the same thing, but they had cut a big trunk out it so you could go through. But he walked his boat around. I did the same thing, got out and walked my boat because, you know, you don't want to try to slide through a tight spot, uh, you know, over a tree like that. It's a recipe for disaster and could make for a bad day. But, um, 
that's how nice everybody was down here in Bandon. So, um, and like I said, hire a guide, man. They can take a big learning curve out of coming down here. But if you're a do-it-yourselfer, it's real easy to come down here and go fishing. So uh, that being said, we're going to keep this one, you know, try to keep it 10 minutes or, or less. We're a little over 10 minutes. But, hey, just want to send a shout-out, to to all my new subscribers. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for uh, for for believing in me, and, and hopefully you guys like what you see. And, uh, you know, I can help everybody catch more fish and find some new places to fish. So we're all not fishing the Wilson, the Trass, the Kilchus, and all the other places. You can come down here and, and have a good time and bring your significant other and catch some fish. I think next time we come down here, we've seen some people this morning that were going out in the bay crabbing, so we're going to probably go do that. That's my wife's favorite, so it's important to always do your wife's favorite, if you know what I mean. So uh, that being said, hey, tight lines, guru out.